Welcome to Collector Showdown. Today, two Pittsburgh Pirate baseball collectors go to bat for the ultimate fantasy prize, a prize that we're keeping secret from them both until the very end. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> said Brian Giles. Jason Bay and Freddie Sanchez. You're doing pretty well so far. Clemente or not Clemente? I feel pretty confident, I gotta be honest with you. A little close right there. You're gonna need luck, and I'm the best man, so you better bring your A game. We are here today at beautiful PNC Park in downtown Pittsburgh, home of the legendary Pirates, for the ultimate baseball showdown. Hey, now that's a collectible. <laughs> On Collector Showdown, there are two challenges. First, a test of knowledge. Second, a test of skill. If our contestants are tied after the first two rounds, we go to a sudden death showdown. The stakes are high. The prize will be a dream come true for only one of these two collectors. Will it be Glenn, the huge Pirates fan with his own Pirates trivia website? Or Dan, the avid Pirates collector with his own Roberto Clemente Museum? You're just going to have to watch and find out. I'm Lanny Frateria, and I am in my 31st year as a Pittsburgh Pirates broadcaster, and I am honored to be in this position. I think this is a tremendous franchise and a very proud city. We've been very, very fortunate with the 60 World Series, the 1971 Championship, the 1979 World Championship, and then a run of three consecutive division titles in the early 90s. And for anyone that's had that opportunity to taste that championship, to be a part of all of that excitement, one wants to share that with the next generation. I think that there, there really are two types of, of collectors. Well, maybe there's more than that, but, but basically two. And that is the, the one individual that sees that this is a means by which I can make some money. And then there are those people that want to collect items because it's something that's substantial that they can look back on and say, whether it's a scorecard from a particular game, I remember where I was and I remember some details. I can remember being with my son at that ball game and that means a lot to me. In the 31 years I've been doing Pirates baseball, this is the finest group of young men I have ever been with. And so, admittedly, I want to see these, these guys do well, but I also believe that there's a nucleus of tremendously talented players like Freddie Sanchez and Jason Bay and Jack Wilson. We've got a lot of great things coming up in Pittsburgh. My name's Glenn, and I collect Pittsburgh Pirates baseball club memorabilia. My name is Dan. This is my son, Dominic. I'm, I've been a pirate collector and fan since about six years old. My favorite player and who I collect basically is Roberto Clemente. When I was a kid, I, I very vaguely remember him playing. And I just think as I learned more about him and what his life was all about, I thought, what better person to collect? And I just found it a lot of fun. He was just a, a great person and how he died. And I just thought that it would be a smart thing for me to collect, basically. It's not really a collection. It's not like a museum. It's not stuff that's on display. It's just, it's what my life is. I had this whole collection in my home. My wife, who's pretty understanding, she asked if I would, you know, bring it down here. So I decided to make this uh, little mini Clemente museum. It's cups that we drink out of. It's, you know, things that I wear. It's hats that I have that I, you know, wear on different occasions. So it's just something that's part of our everyday life then. You have to cheer for the team that you grew up with. Uh, so I grew up near Pittsburgh, and uh, I cheer for the Pirates, and I've just accumulated then uh, different things over the years. We got three Hall of Famers here. Um, Bill Mazeroski was one of my favorite players growing up. Isn't that right, Bill? I've collected all different things. I started out collecting cards, and I collected just about everything. But I got a Roberto Clemente game used bat, and I just really thought that that was much better than all the other things because I could show people and you could pick it up and you don't have to worry about damaging it. Well, I think one of the things that I have that's unique is this um, wooden stack and dolls. When I was in uh, Prague at the Czech Republic in uh, 2002, most interesting to me is they spelled Pittsburgh here with just one T. I had fun getting set up for this because I got to open boxes that I haven't been in for a while. I got to you know, look through memories that I hadn't seen for a while. 
And as we were setting up, I went through a collection of old baseball cards that I hadn't you know, looked at for um, several years. And then just kind of the memories and uh, emotions and those types of things uh, you know, come back. So, I mean, there are strong feelings. I mean, it's, it's my life, it's my history. Here's a game used uh, Roberto Clemente cap from 1972. This could be his last cap with the possibility of it being his 3,000th hit cap. I think I'm pretty much for collecting Roberto Clemente at, at a, a, like a pinnacle, you know, but I keep thinking that there won't be anything else that I, I at least I tell my wife there's nothing else that I want to buy, but I end up finding something. Well, to my competitor, I'd say best of luck and may the best man win. I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, I know my baseball history. I hope you know yours. But you're going to need luck, and I'm the best man, so you better bring your A game. Round one is a test of knowledge. I will ask each contestant nine questions related to the world of Pittsburgh Pirates baseball. Whoever gets the most questions right wins round one. This is the first time our contestants are getting to meet each other. Glenn, this is Dan. Dan, Glenn. Glenn, do you have anything to say to Dan before we start? Dan, just want to say best of luck to you, because you're going to need it. Ooh, Dan. Well, you stole my line, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see who will need it. Let the games begin. You both say you know a lot about baseball in this city. Now it's time to find out who truly is the bigger know-it-all when it comes to Pittsburgh Pirate trivia. Are you ready? Ready. Who was the first pirate to hit a home run at PNC Park? Dan, what is your answer? Sean Casey. And Glenn, what is your answer? I said Brian Giles. Well, the answer is John Vanderwall. He was the first pirate to hit a home run in this stadium on April 9th, 2001. And the Pirates are playing the Cincinnati Reds. Final score, Reds 8, Pirates 2. Tally, so far, 0-0 zero, zero for both of you. How tall is the right field wall here at PNC Park? Sneaking a peek, are ya? <laughs> Dan, tell me your answer. 21 foot. Glenn, what do you think the answer is? I use the plural, 21 feet. Feet, foot, both says pretty much the same thing. And the answer is 21 feet. Why 21? Why not 20? Why not 25? Exactly. Roberto Clemente's number was 21. And so in honor of him, 21 feet for the right field wall here at PNC Park. What did Roberto Clemente eat before every game to help calm his nerves? I'm taking a guess on this. You one. have to take a guess. Chicken. What is it? Chicken? Glenn? Chicken. He may have had chicken on occasion, but what he had every game, according to his teammates, is a spoonful of honey. That's what he said helped to relax him, and he kept a jar of honey in his locker. And Obviously, it works for him. Which player is featured on the most expensive baseball card ever sold? So your answer is? Honus Wagner. Glenn, what is yours? Honus Wagner. Well, the answer is Honus Wagner. That is the most expensive card ever sold, and that's from the 1900s, mint condition. He was a player for the Pittsburgh Pirates who was inducted into the National Hall of Fame in 1936, and several years ago, the card sold online for $1.265 million. That's a lot of money, and it's partly because of the legend surrounding it. It was uh, the American Tobacco Company's T206 set, but word has it, Wagner didn't want to be associated with smoking in any way, so production of the set was stopped and there are thought to be only about 50 of them in existence. So that's why it's so darn expensive. The Pirates' previous name was the Pittsburgh Alleghenies, but they changed their name because of the acquisition of this player. Fred Clark. Fred Clark, Glenn, what do you say is the answer? Louis Beerbauer. 
That was a quick answer for you, and I have to tell you, the answer is correct. It is Louis Bierbauer. He played for the Philadelphia Athletics, and he is the reason the Pittsburgh Pirates are called the Pirates today. Back in the day, the general sentiment was the Pittsburgh team pirated him away, stole him from the Philadelphia team in 1891, a long time ago. But his contract was up for grabs, so fair game. But now the name of the pirate stuck. Which two major league players are the only ones who have ever won a World Series with a home run? Dan, what do you say? Bill Mazeroski and Joe Carter. Glenn? Dan's a wise man. Dan's a wise man, eh? Well, it looks like you are both wise men because the answer is Bill Mazeroski and Joe Carter. They are the only two major league players who have ever won a World Series with a home run for Mazeroski. It happened in 1960 when they were playing the New York Yankees and the Pirates were defeated by more than 10 runs in three games, won three close games and recovered from a 7-4 deficit late in game seven to eventually win on a walk-off home run by second baseman Bill Mazeroski. For Joe Carter, it happened in 1993 when they were up against the Philadelphia Phillies. In 2006, the Pittsburgh Pirates hosted the Major League Baseball All-Star Game here at PNC Park. Which two Pirates played for the 2006 National League All-Star Team? Now it's time. Dan, what's your answer? Jason Bay and Freddie Sanchez. Glenn? Jason Bay, Freddie Sanchez. Oh, look, two wise men once again. <laughs> the answer is Jason Bay and Freddie Sanchez. Jason Bay is the left fielder. He made his first career appearance as a starter in the Major League All-Star game and went one for three with a single. And Freddie Sanchez entered the game in the fifth inning as a shortstop, and he made his mark in the game by making an impressive leaping catch. It was the defensive play of the game. What professional baseball team called both Pittsburgh and Washington, D.C. home? There is an answer to this question. Senators, uh, I'm sure that's wrong. What do you think it is, Glenn? Homestead Grays. And the answer is the Homestead Grays. They were a professional baseball team that played in the Negro Leagues, part of the baseball history in this city. And from the late 30s through the 40s, they played their games at the Pittsburgh Pirates home field, Forbes Field. And however, they also adopted the Washington DC's Griffith Stadium as their home away from home for some of their games. We have pretty much determined who is the winner of round one. The final score, Dan for Six for you, Glenn. You won round one of Collector Showdown. Congratulations, right. Glenn. Dan, you can still pick this up. If you win round two, the skills challenge of Collector Showdown, you can force a sudden death showdown and get even closer to the mystery prize. He was good. He got a couple that I wouldn't have got anyway, so it was pretty fair. But I think I might make it up in this next round here. I feel good having taken a first round, but I have no idea you know, what's to come. So Dan is a great competitor and uh, I'm sure we're gonna have a good second round. That's it, round two of Collector Showdown next. In round one of Collector Showdown, Glenn struck Dan out in our test of knowledge. You're doing pretty well so far. And now up at the plate, round two, the test of skill. You are going to play a game of 500 up, an old fashioned game, take you right back to your childhood when you were first learning to play the game. It may have been a while, so I'm gonna go over the rules with you again. You are going to stand out in the field while someone hits balls at you. If you catch a fly ball in the air, 100 points. If you catch the ball after one bounce, 75 points. After two bounces, 50 points. And if you catch the ball after it rolls on the ground, that's 25 points. And the first to score 500 points wins round two of Collector Showdown. Glenn, you won round one. If you win this round, you win Collector Showdown and get the mystery prize. Dan, you can still win this game. If you win this round, and you've got your cheering section here with your son, Dominic. If you win this round, you can force a sudden death showdown tiebreaker. Now, I am not gonna be the one hitting the balls to you because you'd oh. be just running after foul balls. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce our expert in this area, please. 
the Pittsburgh Pirates, Pirates third base coach, Jeff Cox. He's going to be the one to hit the balls for you to catch. Are you guys ready for this ready. challenge? I'm ready. Okay, let the competition begin. All Excellent. Right. Take your spots out in the field. Here, play ball number one. Wow. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Got it. And that is on the ground. That's 25 points for Dan. Let's see fly ball number two. Okay. Wow. 100 points for Glenn. 25 for Dan. Oh, no. Fly ball number three. One bounce, two bounce. Was that a roll? Sure it was. That was a roll. 25 more points for you, Dan. 50 total. Glenn, you're at 100. First to get to 500. And there he goes. One bounce. 75 points. Now you're at 125. You're leading, Dan. Whoa! What do you say, Jeff? One bounce? You betcha one bounce. One bounce. Let's see who's going to win this round. On deck! <laughs> well, that was on the ground. <laughs> that was clearly on the ground. So that's 25 points. 225 for Dan. 100 for Glenn. Whoa! Okay. Holy Way moly! To win. And who got that one? That's on Glenn! 200 points for you, Glenn! <laughs> okay. Up in the lane drive! One, two, yep. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> so that was two bounces? Oh, that's two bounces. All right, now. Pass the. Whoa. Here we go. They don't... Whoa. Who's going to catch this one? Whoa. 100 points. All right, now. We're going to go. Whoa. In the air. 475. Who's gonna get it? Oh no, yeah, I think he's And that one's on the ground. 25 points, 500 points, Dan. You won. <laughs> Round two of Collector Showdown Skills Challenge. Jeff, oh my gosh, just let me say, one heck of a batter. I'll tell you what, you <laughs> betcha, you betcha. <laughs> one heck of a batter. So, you didn't win this round. Uh, how do you, how, what, would you have done differently, anything? Be 20 years younger. Be 20 years younger. <laughs> Dan, I hear you got a lot of practice with the fly ball game. Yeah, I, it was tougher than I thought, though, the long balls especially. <laughs> it's hard to judge them out there. But uh, he was tough, very tough. So how do you feel now that you've forced the Sudden Death Showdown? I'm ready. I'm ready. I got my win back. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, uh, All right, it's time. You betcha. Okay. That fly ball competition was tough. Not only was it tough judging the flies, running back for them, but then uh, dealing with Dan as a uh, middle linebacker was uh, pretty tough. It was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be, honestly. Uh, I thought it would be, I'd breeze through it, and he was a very good challenge. Good competition, and looking forward to the next round. In Sudden Death Showdown, we are going to play an interesting game called Roberto Clemente or not Roberto Clemente. I'm going to throw out a piece of trivia and our contestants have to correctly identify whether the answer is Roberto Clemente or not Roberto Clemente. If they both get it right, we continue. If they both get it wrong, we continue. The first to give a correct answer when the other one does not wins the game and gets to claim the fabulous mystery prize. Roberto Clemente was a Hall of Fame player for the Pittsburgh Pirates from 1955 to 1972. Tragically, he died when his plane crashed while delivering supplies to survivors of an earthquake in Nicaragua. He lives on as one of the most beloved players in baseball history. Well, let's get to it. This player was traded to the Pirates after a stint with the Louisville Colonels. Clemente or not Clemente? Show me. Not Clemente, and that is correct, Onus Wagner. Next, he was the first pirate to hit a home run in the all-star competition. Clemente or not Clemente? Okay, let's see it. Not Clemente, not Clemente, correct. Paul Wehner is not Clemente. Next, this rookie holds the, pirate, the pirate's record for the most singles in a season. Not Clemente or Clemente? Not Clemente, not Clemente. Lloyd Wehner, not Clemente. Next, 
He was born in Puerto Rico. Clemente or not Clemente? Clemente, Clemente, next. In the World Series, this player was the last pirate to receive a new Corvette in recognition for his Sport Magazine MVP award. Clemente or not Clemente? Okay, that's it. Clemente and not Clemente. Well, obviously one of you got this right and one of you didn't. And the answer is not Clemente. Willie Stargell, congratulations, Dan. You are the winner of Collector Showdown. Thank you. Good job, Dan. Thank God it was Clemente questions. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, you didn't win today in Collector Showdown, but you did very well. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, you're not going home empty-handed. Right. You have this great personalized Pirates jersey with your yep. name on the back. That's Thank you. a collectible in itself. And then this ultra-rare Collector wow. Showdown cap to go great. with your new jersey. Great. And uh, we also have tickets to tonight's game. Oh, thank so you. So that you can watch it and... Yes. So what kind of experience was this for you today? It was great. I had a great time. Um, we got to hang out on the club level, answer some questions, come down on the field and try and catch some fly That's balls. That's a big deal. Yeah. And Not be, many people get down here. And be on the field then uh, at the PNC Park. Uh, it was just a great day. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Right on. Thanks I'm very much. glad you enjoyed. Okay. Dan, you won Collector Showdown. Any idea what you won? I have no idea. It should be interesting. It should definitely be interesting. Well, for starters, Tonight, at tonight's game, you two have primo seats in the announcer's booth, an ultra-exclusive area where you get to hang out with the announcers the, wow. of the Pittsburgh Pirates. How cool is that? That's fantastic. Isn't that great? Yeah. Somewhere where we, we don't get to see the game from. There are a lot of guys out here getting ready for the game, but there is one player in particular who wants to meet you. Jason Bay, all-star oh, wow. left fielder. That's great. Fantastic. A private catch session doing, with man? all of you. I heard your dad did pretty good today, man. Hey, how are you? you? Did real well. How you doing? How you doing, man? Jason, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So I heard you were the big winner, huh? Uh, yeah, I caught a few of them out there. It's a lot harder than it looks, I'll <laughs> well, tell you that. Yeah, some days better than others, <laughs> for sure. All right, so well, you guys brought your gloves? Oh, you better believe it. Well, let's do well, it. This right. is it. Oh, you guys, you guys, you guys don't want to start that. You don't want to start that far away. There we go. That's tough for me. Oh. You start out that short? What's that? Real short. How short? <laughs> that's good, that's good. Really? Oh, almost. There we go. Oh boy. You're already loose, huh? <laughs> Been here all day. There it is. Throw him a good one. Uh-oh. A little close right there. Yeah, <laughs> Coming right back at you. There you go. Jason, does Dominic have a future in hey, the major league? Yeah. <laughs> I'm diving around I agree. and everything. I agree. That's for sure. Want me to sign that jersey for you? All right. That would be cool. What do you got back there? Manny, Manny Sangan. Sangan. There you go. This is definitely oh, something cool. people don't get to do That's every great. day. That's great. Now I'll for Dad. I you. For Dad. Yeah, you cannot well, forget yeah. about Dad. Sure, go ahead. Anywhere. Wherever you want. I'll go wherever He's you want. the man who won Collector Showdown. Autographs all around here. <laughs> what do you say? There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Right on. Thank you very much, no Jason. Problem. No problem. All star left fielder, That's Pittsburgh great. Pirate. Thank you. Nice Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy. All right, buddy. Have a good one. All right. Good luck tonight. They'll be watching. Dan, you are a Pittsburgh Pirates collector, and now you have your very own jersey signed by all-star left fielder Jason Bay, and as does your son. 
and uh, you got this chance to warm up with him and play catch. What kind of day was this like for you? Oh, it was great. It was a real lot of fun. Uh, more than I expected, I must say. Are you looking forward to tonight's game? Oh, for sure. It should be a lot of fun to sit up there and watch the game from seats that play like that. Is this something that you're going to tell all your friends about? Yep. Yep? Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy the game tonight. Congratulations. Thanks again. All right. OK. <laughs> Buck goes trail three to nothing, and we are honored to have Dominic in the broadcast booth. Dominic's here with his uh, dad, Dan. And they are the winners. They not only won the opportunity to be in the broadcast booth with us. You might think, that, OK, big deal, right? But Dominic, more importantly, had a chance to play catch on the field here at PNC well, Park some, with Jason some Bay. Some deals are bigger than others. Like, that, is a, that is a real big deal, going out and playing catch with the, with Jason. By the way, uh, Dan and Dominic were the winners of the opportunity to be in the booth and to play catch with Jason Bay uh, by way of the Collector's Showdown, which is a TV show. So it all fits in extremely well that Dominic should be playing catch with Jason Bay. Very good. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to see a lot of things that I would never be able to see. And it, it was even more important to me to be able to do it with my son and for him to be able to do that stuff. It, it was more important for him to do it than me, you know, to do it myself. And I think he, he'll have something to talk about for the rest of his life. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.